This video may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. In Pontiac, Michigan, on May 18, 2012, 17-year-old Jonathan Hoffman called 911 to report that he had just been shot by his grandmother. After shooting Jonathan, his grandmother Sandra Lane left the room. 911, what's your emergency? I've just been shot. Where? Huh? I've just been shot. Where are you at? 6372 Brookview Lane. Brookview in what city? West Brookview. Okay, how did you get shot? I'm getting into my grandma and grandma shot me. Your grandma and grandpa shot you? My grandma. I'm going to die. Help. Okay, we're going to stay on the phone with me, okay, sir? I'm going to get help on the way. I'm gonna get help on the way, okay? Hello? Hello? I'm, I'm at, where were you shot at? Where are you shot? My elbow, my chest, my chest. Your chest? Okay, who, who, are your grandparents still there? No. Where did they go? I don't know. You don't know where they went? They shot you though, right? Okay, stay on the phone, okay. Okay, I, I know we got help on the way, I promise you that, okay? You said, you said, uh, you, it's in your chest? Yes. Okay, did you get some kind of, can you, can you walk or do you, are you sitting? I'm sitting. Okay, okay, I don't want you to move. Okay, just keep on breathing. Okay, and it just happened? Are you there? Hello? Keep talking to me. Keep talking to Hello? me. Are you there? Right. No. Can you, can you keep talking? You can't keep talking to me? While on the phone with 911, Lane walked back into the room and shot him again, ultimately killing him. He had been shot a total of eight times. At the trial, Lane claimed that she acted in self-defense, saying that Lane kicked her, although this was later revealed to not be true. Jonathan was living in Michigan with his grandparents, while his parents, in the middle of divorcing, moved to Arizona to get treatment for his sister, Jessica's brain tumor. Jonathan was a drug user and was apparently prone to violent outbursts. He was on probation after a drug overdose landed him in the hospital, and had even failed a drug test on the day he died. Sandra Lane was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to 20 to 40 years in prison. She will never be released, as at the time the murder took place, she was 75 years old. The last thing she said before leaving the courtroom in tears was how much she loved her grandson.
Rest in peace, Jonathan Hoffman. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, in June 2013, a 911 call was made by nine-year-old Omari Varela. Immediately after the operator asks, what is the emergency, you can hear him being berated by his two parents, Cynthia and Stephen Casas. Hello, this is
Police visited the home after the call was made, seemed satisfied, and left. Six months later, on December 27, 2013, his mother called 911 to report that her son Omari had been injured, but was still apparently breathing. My son was playing on a it's a metal horse, like a rocking horse. My two year old pushed him off the pushed him off the horse and it looked kind of like he was having a seizure or something, so I was trying to do CPR and push on his chest and try to get him thing. What he, address are you at? He's really out of it. And he was pushed off the metal horse? Yeah, he, well, he was playing on it, and my little boy uh, gets real aggressive and doesn't like to share him, so I thought Amari's leg had got stuck and he would have had, had enough time to catch himself, but he didn't catch himself, and he, I heard him hit himself his head. So I tried to push him, pushing on his stomach, trying to get him, and the little, my little boy got ex was getting really excited and saying, Mari, play, Mari, play, and I tried to put cold water on him. Responding officers would later say Omari's clothes were dry, as were his mother's, despite her claim. She pulled him into the shower with her to try and revive him. His head, did he stop breathing? No, he hasn't stopped breathing, but he hit it. He, I, I tried to get put cold water on him. Omari sadly did not survive. Months later, it was revealed that his mother had kicked him in the stomach so hard that it caused injuries to his head, chest, back, and abdomen. He had lost 25% of his blood volume due to internal bleeding. Cynthia claimed it was an attempt to discipline him, but something went wrong apparently. On May 6, 2016, Cynthia Varela was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Stephen Costas was originally sentenced to 35 years in prison in November 2015, but the sentence was reduced by around 20 years for some reason. Rest in peace, Omari Varela. I'm so sorry to have learned about what you went through when you were alive, but I hope you're in a better and safer place now. In Hartford, Wisconsin, on July 15, 2013, Joy Blodgett called 911 to report that her 19-year-old daughter, Jessie, wasn't breathing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hartford 911, what's your emergency? My daughter is blue. I went to wake her up, and I just got home from for lunch, and she won't wake up. Oh my God! Okay. okay, hang on just a second. Okay. Okay. So is she, is she breathing? I don't think so. No. Okay, ma'am. Do you know how to do CPR? <laughs> Jesse. You do. Do you know how to do CPR, ma'am? She's cold. She's cold. She's cold. She's cold. Oh my God! Oh my gosh! She's cold. Okay. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Her pants are all wet and she's got. It looks like. Strangulation marks. There are strangulation marks? 
That's what it looks like. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Honey, what happened to you? <laughs> no. No. Honey, no. No. <laughs> First responders arrived on the scene immediately. However, it was sadly too late. Jesse was pronounced dead. After weeks of investigating, authorities found out the murderer was one of Jesse's friends, Daniel Barselt. During the investigation, they also discovered that he had been responsible for an assault that had occurred on a woman named Melissa Etzler of Richfield. She was walking her dog at a local park when she was attacked from behind by a man with a knife. Thankfully, she was able to fight off her attacker and escape with her life. The attack happened on July 12th, three days before Jesse's death. Daniel Bartelt was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Jesse's father, Buck Blodgett, has since forgiven Daniel for what he did, telling Crime Watch Daily, Jesse's life and death for me are for bringing light into this world. Rest in peace, Jesse Blodgett. In Pueblo, Colorado, on July 29, 2015, Katrina Levecci called 911 to report a fire at her mother's house. Worried that her mother, 77-year-old Susan Hernandez, was still in the house at the time of the fire, she went into the flaming structure, only to find something truly unimaginable, and her reaction was captured on audio via the 911 call. Mr. Barber, can I help you? Yes, there's a fire at my mother's house. What's burning? The house is full of smoke. I cannot find my mother. Do you see any flames? What? Yes, there's flames in the basement. And her music's on. The door, the door, our front door is broke. Like somebody broke in. I, I, she might be in the basement. I don't know, but the house is full of smoke. Please send somebody. They're coming right now. Okay. Mom! But I'm in the basement now. Then I want you to get out of the house. Okay, Mom! Mom! Okay, I'm going now. I want you to go in there. I'm here. I'm, I'm in here. I cannot leave. No, I, I, I'll be, I don't want you I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Mom! Mom! So I, can they get, check the basement as soon as they get to us? So I'm afraid she's down there. Mom! Susan Hernandez was found set on fire at the bottom of the basement steps, dead. Looking into the case, Sergeant Raymond Purvis discovered that Mrs. Hernandez had suffered a blow to the back of the head. She had been murdered. Authorities closed in on her nephew, Anthony Senna. Senna had been fixing his grandmother's roof, all while she was paying him thousands of dollars for doing this. However, she wanted her money back after realizing that Anthony was neglecting the roof job and spending the money. She said that she would call the cops if she didn't have her money back by Tuesday, July 28th, the day authorities believed she was initially killed. After police found the murder weapon, a hammer, in his mom Vanessa's house, 
It traced back to Anthony, who was arrested and charged with first-degree murder, arson, and theft. On November 22, 2016, Anthony Senna was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison with no chance for parole. Rest in peace, Susan Hernandez. In Polk County, Florida, on November 23, 2018, 76-year-old Larissa Pickard called 911 to report that her house was on fire. In the call, she states that she was unable to move. It was later learned that she had been recovering from hip surgery and was unable to stand up and reach her walker. She also mentioned that her husband was at a ball game, so she was completely alone. Towards the end of the call, you can hear the sound of the flames increase. Now one one, what is the address of your emergency? Pardon? Now one one, what is the address of your emergency? Okay, in what city? Okay. All right, and what is the phone number you're calling from? Okay, tell me exactly what happened. I think my house is on fire, and I'm here alone, and I'm on a walker. Okay. All right, I have help on the way. I just have a couple of questions, okay? Okay. All right, just to help the paramed or the firefighters, excuse me. Okay, what's your name, ma'am? Okay, and can you spell your first name? I my... Okay, they, these these questions are not going to delay paramedics in any way. Okay, what type of building is involved? It's a log house with a tin roof, but it's coming from the roof, I think. I don't know. Okay, I have help on the way, okay? These questions are not delaying uh, the firefighters at all, okay? Okay. Okay. All right, I do have them coming. All right, I'm sending the fire department to help you now. Stay on the line, and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Okay, how many floors? Okay. Are, how many floors or stories are there? Well, there's just one floor. We got an attic. Okay. <laughs> what should I do? Okay. Okay. Is anyone trapped inside the building? Well, I'm inside the house. I don't even know if I can get out. Okay. All right, I have them coming as quickly as possible, okay? How many? It's just me. Okay. I mean, my husband's at the ball game, and I can't get him. I'll try his cell phone. Okay, exactly where are you located? Uh, no, inside the home. Exactly where are you located oh, inside right the now home? I'm in, right now I'm in the living room. <laughs> the smoke's getting bad. Okay, if it's safe to do so, leave the building, close the doors behind you, and remain outside. Do not try to put the fire out. Do not carry anything. Do not carry out anything that's on fire. I couldn't, honey, if I wanted to. I'm on a walker, and I can't hardly walk. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, well, I do have them coming as quickly as possible, okay, so just let me know when you see them. Okay, where exactly is the fire? On the roof, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay, is anyone injured? No, I'm the only one here. I'm not injured, but my eyes are full of smoke. My lungs, I can't get out the door. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, what is the best entrance of the building to get to you? Well, either when you come up the driveway, the, the back door or the front, either one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm on a wall, so I've got our garage real bad, and I've got, I've got the rest of him. <laughs> okay, I have them coming, okay? They're coming as quickly as possible, okay. lights and sirens, okay? Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. All right. I'm updating them with everything that's going on. Okay, just stay, just stay with me. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be right here until they get there with you, okay? Okay. Okay, if it's safe to do so, stay low to the floor, close the door immediately. Um, all right, cover it. Get down to the floor, honey. Okay. I'll sit on my walker. That's the lowest I can get. Oh, what is that? What's going on? I don't know. Don't hit me on the head. Okay. It was like a drop of water or something. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, I know I shouldn't be panicking. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It, this is a this is a very hard situation to be in, but I am going to be here until they get right there with you, okay? Just let me know when they're there. Um, I'm seeing now how closely they are to you, okay? They're coming as fast as they can. Okay. <laughs> I'm on the line with you as long as I can. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm going to stay on the line with you as long as I can. Just let me know when they get right there with you. All right. Can I call? Should I call somebody? No, they, I have help coming as quickly as possible. And since you're on 911, they, the phone is probably not going to let you do anything else at this time. Unless you have a, um, unless you have like a home phone or something, I know your mobile yeah. phone won't let you hang up with me and call anyone else. No, that's all I've got. I don't know what you're ripping on me. Okay, I have updated them and let them know, okay? So now I'm just, we're just waiting on them to get there. They're coming as quickly as possible. Yes. What's going on, okay? Okay. I'm glad you get a chair where I can sit in. I can walk kind of way away from me. Okay. Okay, I'm sitting down. Okay. Coming as quickly as possible. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Just, just let me. I feel like a big baby. No, it's okay. <laughs> is, is is all? Is the smoke still in the home? Yes, like, are you yes. still filling up? Okay, but you don't see any flames at this time? I can't go outside to see. Yes, but there's no flames in the home that you can see? No, not in the house. I can see the smoke. Okay. But it's all kinds of noise because on the roof. I think it's on the roof. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and just to make sure, this is a log home with the tin roof? Yes. Okay. Just want to let them know exactly. I hope the pine needles have been falling on the roof and my husband's not able to get them down. So I don't know if that's what it is. I don't know. Okay. Yes, ma'am. as possible. <clears throat> I'm back 
stuck in the woods. <laughs> yes, ma'am. They just have a little ways to get to you. <clears throat> they do have to make it a little ways to get to you, but they are coming as quickly as as the quickly the quickest way that we can get them there is how they're responding. Okay. Everything is lights and sirens right now. They they know that it's serious to come quickly. Okay. get up. <laughs> okay, and what, so what are you sitting on right now? Like you're, because I know you're sitting in the dining room chair, okay, and your walker is away from you? Oh, it's right here, I can reach it, but I don't know if I can get Okay. Up. It's being on the phone. <laughs> okay, I understand. It's hard for me to get up. I usually do okay. I just sit in my chair, watch TV and stuff when he's gone. I keep hearing these noises. So I went to investigate and I saw the smoke. Okay, so it's so it's pretty much just hard for you to get up without assistance. Well, usually I can, but I don't know. I guess I'm scared. My wife was leaving because I couldn't get up. The bathroom and stuff. <laughs> Is there any way, do you know how to put me on speakerphone so you can uh, have both hands for your walker? I wish I knew how, but I don't. I'm sorry? I've had it. Every time I try to do the speakerphone, I get. Pictures here they come. I heard it. I hear the sirens. Okay, just I'm staying on the line with you until they get right there with you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Friends. He used to be El Paso. His name is, and what's his last name? 
His wife is... Okay. Okay, we're going to go ahead and call him, okay? My supervisor is going to call him, okay? Okay. But we do... Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to go ahead and call him. And that is your code? Yes. Oh, I'm so, I forgot it's, that. It's okay. Oh, I don't feel really. Do you still hear the sirens? No. They may have cut them off because they're getting closer, because I do see that a unit is closer to you now, Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, they're they're there uh with you, okay? So uh is do you know if your door is on lock? Oh, so let them know. Yes, it's unlocked. Come to hurry. Okay, I'm letting them, I'm updating them now, okay? Okay. <laughs> oh, no, I can't even see you near. <laughs> Yeah, they're coming, okay? They're coming. They're they're right there, but they're they're gonna make their way in too, okay? Okay. <sighs> okay, so the house is filled with smoke now you can't see anything? No. Okay. getting there. I don't know exactly what they're doing uh, right now, but I do know that their main concern right now is getting to you. The electricity's off now. Yeah, they... <laughs> yes, they... Yeah, oh, it's okay. They did that so that way the electricity doesn't help the fire keep going. So they cut that off okay. so that way the house won't like explode or, you know, anything like that could happen. So that was that's us doing that. That's not the fire, okay? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because since that's a um, conductor, they don't want, you know, the electricity to make anything else worse in the home. Sure. <laughs> I did let them know. I, I, they know you're in there. I'm just going to stay on the line with you until they get in there with you, okay? Okay. Until they're able to come get you. Did you get home? Um, let me see right now, okay? My supervisor, I'm going to ask her right now. Okay, are you still at, you're still at a dining room chair? Yes. Okay. But it's getting really hot in here. Okay. It's 
to get a hold of She said she did not contact them since there, since uh, the fire department is already on scene. I guess she was just going to contact them if they had, if someone had not gotten there quick, you know, in a timely manner. Mm-hmm. Since we're there, uh, she didn't contact them. And she, we didn't go forward with contacting them. Oh, oh, I think by her now. Okay. Are you here? They're yes, they're, after me. they're here. They're there. They're there. I'm letting them know exactly what's going on, okay? They are there. Okay. They, I promise they are right there. It's just they have to uh, make their way into you, okay? Okay, but they better run. <laughs> Hello? 
did you drop the phone? Are you still there? I'm still here.
Sadly, Loressa perished in the fire. Despite the upper razor assuring her that firefighters were on the way, they didn't make it in time. It was also learned that firefighter Captain James Williams took out his phone and posted a video of the burning building to Snapchat and that multiple policies were broken that night. Policies that could have potentially saved Loressa. Here are the five critical rules that were broken, courtesy of ABC Action News. Number one, verbal critical CAD notes were not relayed via radio. According to ESCI, the first engine to arrive at Loressa Pickard's home did not know for eight minutes that there was a person inside the home. The report says the computer, which was in the engine, was not working and the notes that the firemen would usually access for information was unattainable. Even though Poe County Dispatch relayed the critical information that someone was trapped inside the house, that information was solely relayed through CAD and not radio. Number 2. All team members responsible for situational awareness. ESCI went on to note that, even though the first engine and the men responding did not know someone was in the house when they first arrived, other engines on their way to Pickard's home did know a victim was inside because their computers were functioning properly. However, none of the firemen relayed the information to the first crews responding because they assumed they already knew. Number 3. Officer Development While investigating this specific incident, as well as Polk County Fire Rescue's previous work, it was apparent to ESCI that officers are in need of additional training simulation. Due to the high number of emergency calls and not fires, ESCI explained that it would be beneficial to have additional fire simulations and training to improve decision-making skills. Number 4. Operational Readiness One of the most critical mistakes, according to ESCI, was that the first engine did not bring rescue tools. This includes forcible entry tools, thermal imagining cameras, or a pressurized extinguisher. Number 5. Dispatch Sequence ESCI says the pre-alert to rescue crews was used properly in this case, but is not used overall throughout all emergency situations and can be used to improve response times. While not in the top 5 most critical mistakes, it was noted by the ESCI that Poke Fire Rescue did not reach out to the Pickard family the night of the fire or days afterwards. A debrief analysis of the incident was also not completed, which according to the ESCI is highly recommended in all incidents, including a loss of life incident. In May 2019, firefighter captain James Williams announced his resignation from his position. Loressa's family estate was given $200,000 as compensation. Rest in peace, Loressa Pickards.